After the 2016 election, I started to read up of what experts in authoritarianism were advising we could do. And one of the things was to write things down. And that first Saturday after the election, I visited Val Kill, which is the home of Eleanor Roosevelt, my North Star for all things. And as I viewed Val Kill and walked around with my dogs and walked on the property where she had walked with her two Scottish Terriers, I wondered what would Eleanor do? And the importance throughout her time in writing her daily column, my day in writing things down. And that night I came home and wrote what became week one of the weekly list. The weekly list was a list of broken norms that things were changing around us so quickly. We were like the frog in water coming to boil degree by degree. And because of the chaos we were living in, it was impossible for us to keep track of everything changing. One of the odd things about the early days of the Trump administration, and I would say even the days of the post-Trump administration, right, um, is how uh, kind of dismissive people were of recognizing how serious a threat this really was. So Amy's absolute decision to to do this no matter what right from the very beginning she was she was alone in the effort the role it played um is as big as one can imagine it is as instrumental as it should be um and i only wish that there were more there had been more efforts like it so as we were getting closer to the election one of the norms that i documented was the national archives had altered images of trump and i thought to myself not only is this not normal, am I adding it to the list, I became increasingly concerned about my list being archived at the Library of Congress and whether if, if somebody like Trump or a Trump-like figure were to become the leader of our country, whether they would try to tinker with the history of this time. Because directly after the election and leading up to the elections, Republicans were already trying to recast what had happened during the Trump era. So I thought about documenting it in a place that would be safe and neutral. Some people recommend it out of the country, but I wanted to do it somewhere here. And also I realized the unique challenges of it because it's a website and something like website didn't exist 20 years ago, probably will not exist in another 20 years. So I, I started to understand this was a really important undertaking and decided it would be safest at a university. And she came to us and she said, um, I'd like, I'm looking for a safe place. I'm looking for a place where the people who will be the holders, right, of this gift, um, that I know that they understand how important it is. And I, and that they, I know that they understand the, the severity um, of, of the risk that this is struggling against. And so she, because she had been involved with the Center for Immediate Risk, she had, had been following our, our events, we were corresponding, you know, on and off. She called me and she said, hey, I'd like it to be with you. I feel confident that by putting the list, the weekly list with you, um, it will be safe. We could not be more honored by the fact that we received this incredibly important gift uh, from Amy Siskin. You know, Annenberg was set up to do a lot of different kinds of things. And one of the areas that we've always had a real strength in is political communication, thinking about the impact of our larger communication ecosystem on political possibility. And what this gift helps to concretize is a version of what the dynamics were like in this moment in American politics in a way that's not just important to us, clearly it is because it impacts our daily lives, but it will be key to have this archived for future generations who want to understand what was happening now, who want to research it and see how they can explain things that happen in the future in American politics. And so I do feel like Annenberg is the perfect place to take care of such an important contribution to the larger political discourse and culture. And we're happy to have it here and we'll make sure to take good care of it. I had been told by archivists and historians that this would be a first of its kind type of project, but I didn't fully appreciate still until we started to get into it and spend months and months on it, trying to understand how to take a project that is somewhat dynamic and would be used by historians and put it in a format that centuries from now would still be accessible. 
So the prospect of archiving the weekly list um, was exciting, not only because the material is interesting, uh, but also because up to that point, neither Annenberg nor Penn had done that much with born digital material as far as archives were concerned. So this was an opportunity to explore web archiving, but also the challenges that come with figuring out how to take on a collection that is complicated by its digital nature. I think that there's kind of a symbolic importance about a digital collection because Trump came of age in a digital moment and the risks to democracy um, are kind of performed, right, on digital platforms. So I think that the fact that this gift itself is digital echoes in a really nice way um, where the dangers are actually coming from. As an archives, the thing that you hope most is that researchers will find material valuable. Um, and I think with the weekly list, researchers may find this list in and of itself valuable, but also Amy's larger project uh, as an example of how somebody in the current day and age interacts in the media landscape and participates in uh, the political conversation. I've come to understand that our country probably will not have a full appreciation of the importance of the list until long after I am gone. The need to have this record, so history will be true to what happened during this time and it can't be rewritten by those who might want us to forget how badly things got in our country and how close we came to descending into authoritarianism. And we're not done with that battle yet. We're maybe in the fifth or sixth inning of this battle to thwart off authoritarianism and remain a democracy. But this project and the archiving of it and telling the truth in factual form will live on for centuries when scholars and historians and citizens try to make sense of what this time was like, both living in it and the truth of what we endured.